And late breaking tonight, the body of a missing Fayette County teenager with autism has been found just hours after he disappeared. According to the Fayette County Sheriff's Office, 13-year-old Javante Reed was discovered floating in a swimming pool. He left his home on Marydale Drive around noon, wearing only an adult diaper. Dozens of emergency crews and volunteers searched all day for the boy. Right now, this is being treated as a terrible accident. We have some more disturbing details tonight involving the arrest of a young mother in Gwinnett County. Police say they found her passed out in her car, surrounded by empty liquor bottles, and her baby in the back seat. They'd been in that hot car for hours. Ron Jones working this story tonight. Ron, this unfortunately is a story we see as we get into the summer months. Yeah, that's right, Vinny. And police say if it were not for a concerned neighbor looking out of her window and seeing the mom passed out in that car for hours, this story could have had a tragic ending. Investigators say about a week ago, 26-year-old Kaylee Cheney drove into the Veranda Estates apartment complex in Gwinnett County drunk. They say when she pulled into the parking stall, she passed out because of the amount of alcohol she had consumed. Police say when they got here on the scene, the Cheney was totally unresponsive. They did everything they could to wake her up, so they had to call in emergency medical personnel. And when the fire department showed up on the scene, they couldn't wake her up as well until they tapped her on the foot. But they also noticed that there was a large amount of vomit on Cheney. And after she woke up, they said that they noticed an empty bottle of vodka and empty wine bottles as well. Officers say what makes her story even more disturbing is what they allegedly found in her back seat. They say her young one-year-old daughter was strapped in a car seat, yelling, screaming at the top of her lungs, crying. And there was also a large dog back there as well. At this point, investigators don't know how long both of them had been in the back of her car. It was obvious that the child had been distraught and was crying and, and appeared just physically and emotionally distressed. The report says the child had been in the back seat for hours. The baby was handed over to family members and Cheney was taken to jail. Officers say it was a hot day and they're glad they got to the child in time. According to a USA Today report, on average, 37 children die every year in America because of hot car deaths. 37. In this case, the child survived. We're thankful for that person to report that so it didn't go any longer than it already had to cause that child any more stress or discomfort. And once again, police say that uh, the child and the dog, they're going to be A-OK. -okay. However, that mom is facing multiple charges, including DUI, and child endangerment. All right, turning now to a disturbing story on your speed feed, folks. This case involves child abuse and it lands a young Fulton County mom in prison for the next 20 years. Prosecutors say 25-year-old Morgan Summerlin allowed men to molest and rape her five and six-year-old daughters in exchange for drugs and money. She pleaded guilty to sex trafficking and child cruelty charges. One of the Johns who abused the children was sentenced to life in prison without parole, plus 146 years. Another was sentenced to 25 years plus life on probation. The girls are now living with other family members. Police say six victims in a four day murder spree were all connected to the suspect's divorce. 56 year old Dwight Jones right there on your screen killed himself today after a standoff with authorities in Phoenix, Arizona. Investigators say Jones's rampage started last Thursday when he gunned down a well-known forensic psychiatrist who had assisted in the John Benet Ramsey case and evaluated him during his divorce proceedings. Jones's other victims include two paralegals and a 72-year-old counselor. At least 69 people are dead in Guatemala tonight as searing flows of ash and mud continue to gush from an erupting volcano. Dire. Very dire here, the intense heat has left bodies unrecognizable. Some are so thickly coated in ash, they look like statues. This is the second time Guatemala's volcano of fire has erupted this year. The Kilauea volcano continues to erupt on Hawaii's big island tonight, destroying hundreds of homes this weekend alone. Thousands of people have been evacuated, but police say They've also had to make a number of arrests of people forcing their way through those blocked off areas. One man actually sped through a, uh, a checkpoint there as lava approached the intersection. He is now facing charges. And this makes it tough for the first responders as well, Vinny. Oh, absolutely. It makes it more dangerous for everyone because they're going to yeah. try to save those lives, but those people are putting everyone's lives at risk. Ron, thanks so much. Sure.
All right, a visit to the White House is supposed to be a big honor for the reigning Super Bowl champs, but instead it's become a battle over the national anthem. Well, tonight, President Donald Trump disinvited the Philadelphia Eagles to the White House. Just a few hours ago, the White House released a statement saying the Eagles, quote, are unable to come to the White House with their full team to be celebrated tomorrow. It then calls out the team saying they disagree with their president because he insists that they proudly stand for the national anthem hand on heart in honor of the great men and women of our military and the people of our country. So instead of the Eagles, President Trump plans to hold a special ceremony for fans honoring America where the national anthem will be played, quote, loudly and proudly. Of course, social media buzzing about this one. There's a lot of support for the team. People like uh, Selene calling, tweeting that the Eagles are standing up to Trump more than all of the GOP combined. But others say the president made the right call. Joe B posted, if you don't honor the flag, you have no business being a guest in the people's house. Well, the Eagles finally tweeted their response just a few minutes ago, thanking the Eagles community for their encouragement and looking ahead to the 2018 season. Well, several members of the team had already said they weren't going to the White House, so you might ask if this is really about the NFL players protesting the anthem or the Oval Office. Either way, we want to know what you think. Did the president make the right call here? Grab your phone or tablet, go to 11alive.com slash vote. We'll keep the poll going during the late feed and check on the results later on in the program.